Welcome to the Monster News Report. I'm Nick Adam Poling, your host. In this show, we will be working with G fans to take on the critical issues and subjects you've been wondering about. Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster is probably one of the most interesting Godzilla films in the Showa series. It's such an enigma that it's probably one of the most talked about films of all Godzilla films by fans who both love it and hate it. Here to talk about the late Yoshimitsu Bano, who was the director of that film, is Kyle Bird. Welcome, Kyle. Hey, Nick. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, uh, unfortunately, Mr. Yoshimitsu Bano passed away um, on May 7th. And, yeah, uh, writer-director of Godzilla vs. Hedera, which is one of my favorites and super uh, crazy, weird movie. But I, I think it's it's important for us to look at uh, Mr. Bano a little bit closely, a little bit more closely than, than just that. Um, in addition to making a very divisive film uh, and... Uh, one of the most hated and one of the most loved, kind of. Uh, I think it's important to recognize his contributions as a whole to the genre. Um, Hedera is still um, one of the most popular monsters. Uh, I mean, I don't know if there's been any monster that's had more toys made of him than Hedera. Um, and, uh, I mean, his Godzilla movie is super... Weird, and not for everyone, that's true, but it's also super unique and super creative, and I think that's why people like myself love it so much, uh, especially in a series where we're in 31 movies, and a lot of them, as much as I like them, a lot of them do start to repeat the same tropes, the same ideas, and uh, something like Godzilla vs. Hedera gives, it, gives you a real big breath of fresh air, might not be air you like, uh, no pun intended. Um, but in addition to that movie, I, I think uh, it's important to recognize Bano because he never gave up wanting to make a Godzilla movie. He wanted to do sequels to Godzilla vs. Hedera, which of course never happened because uh, when producer Tanaka saw Godzilla vs. Hedera, he hated it because of how odd it was and how grim it was for what was supposed to be a kid's movie. He said, you're never touching Godzilla ever again. Um, you know, and Tanaka has been uh, dead for a long time. Um, and people forget that Bano's in involvement and love for Godzilla is what brought us the legendary movie in 2014. So, you know, in a way... We wouldn't have the MonsterVerse without him. Um, and uh, for people who might not know, it was uh, he, he, after Final Wars and everything, he wanted to do a 3D IMAX Godzilla movie, and he was going to self produce it. You know, he just had to get the rights to you from Toho, which he did, and he couldn't get the thing made, and he went and shopped it around to everyone, trying to get interest, and eventually. He ended up meeting up with the legendary guys, and they said, you know, we would like to just do a big budget Godzilla movie here in America again. And that's how uh, Bano, you know, executive produced the, the 2014 movie. And, you know, I think that um, for someone who was told, you know, that, you know, his movie, no one liked his movie, and that he would never make a Godzilla movie again, it's, it's kind of an underdog kind of story that, um, you know, saw him bringing Godzilla back to Hollywood and giving us this new, I guess, renaissance, you know, without 2014, there, there's no Shin Godzilla, there's no Skull Island, there's no Monsterverse, um, and, you know, it all really started with, with, uh, Bano, and I remember thinking, when I saw the 2014 movie, you know, when I saw his name in the credits, you know, sitting in a, you know, packed theater and opening night seeing this big Hollywood blockbuster and there's the name Yoshimitsu Bano and just thinking how cool that was and it's it's really nice that uh, I think before he passed away he got to kind of experience um, experience that you know he he got to go to the Hollywood premieres he got to visit the sets and he got to make friends with with you know these people in Hollywood and um, you know, he got to have a little bit of that limelight, you know, 
know, after being told, hey, we hate your movie and you're never going to do anything with the character again. And, um, you know, it's it's unfortunate that he's passed away, but I, I'm, I'm very happy that he got to experience that. Um, and uh, um, there were... And he still wasn't giving up on kaiju you know he wa he was trying to get a 3d imax gamera movie off the ground uh, and you know you can read a little bit about that online but you know it was typical gamera formula with a couple of kids and uh still very heavy on the env environmental theme um and uh there was a creature named gyra that he was supposed to fight no relation to the the green gargantua but um but yeah that's bano and uh it, he is the last of the Showa Godzilla directors, you know, we've now lost uh, Honda, Oda, Fukuda, and, and now Bano, so it's it's very much kind of the end of a an era, you know, um, and we're definitely not getting any, any younger, and um, so that's why I think it's important to respect these guys when they're alive, and um, keep revisiting their work, and uh, yeah, so, um, Rest in peace, Mr. Bano. Me and uh, my my friend Matt, who does Kaiju Transmissions, the podcast with me, uh, we just did a whole episode about Bano. So if you want to learn more, check it out, because we definitely get into a lot more than just Tetra and the legendary thing. You know, we talk about um, uh, his work with Akira Kurosawa and uh, Prophecies of Nostradamus, which is a really cool uh, end-of-the-world Toho movie from the 70s, really wacky, off the wall. Uh, it's under a self-imposed studio ban, so Toho won't allow it to be released, but if you know where to look, you can find it. Okay, Kyle, I'd like you to tell us, the audience, why Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster is one of your personal favorites. The reason I like Godzilla vs. Hedera so much, um, I mean, there's a few. I mentioned earlier how I think it's a super creative movie in a franchise and in a genre, really, uh, that uh, as much as I enjoy them, they the films do get predictable after a while. They start to repeat certain monsters, story beats, etc., etc., and, and Godzilla vs. Hedera is something that there wasn't anything like it before or since, um, and I think it's a movie that's worth revisiting. Uh, if anyone out there is, oh, I hate it, whatever, I'm, I, it's definitely not for everyone, but I think revisiting it maybe with a fresh perspective and just um, just really appreciating Bano as a filmmaker and um, the things that he was doing with that film, you know, I mean, it's so bizarre, it's got all these cartoon sequences, and um, I know people hate Godzilla flying, and I, I'm not too big a fan of it either, but it's something that can only happen in a movie as weird as, as that. So I kind of just accept it as part of the atmosphere of that overall film. Um, the, 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 the tone is something you don't get often. Uh, it, it was when Toho were making these movies almost exclusively for kids, but I think Bano, even though you have the kid protagonist and everything, Bano was definitely more interested in the, the actual message of the movie and the the and really showing the grim effects of pollution on people and it's true you know in japan at the time they were going through an awful pollution crisis that uh um you know people would pass out in the middle of the street it was so bad the government wasn't doing anything about it you know and that's why where you get godzilla vs hetera from and in the middle of the series of the you know of the that era of godzilla you know, we're looking at movies where, you know, there might be some socio-political themes here and there, but Hedera is the only one that really stands out as having something really important to say, um, and the rest are just kind of, you know, escapist kids' movies or whatever. And so I think that those are really things that are worth maybe giving it a second look and appreciating. And, you know, Hedera is just such a cool creature, it's, and, you know one of the most unique kaiju that there's been um so yeah i i definitely think you know uh, give it another another look if you're one of the people out there that hate it i'm not gonna get on you for not liking it because it's not for everyone but i think there's a lot to appreciate there um 
So uh, yeah, I I I would maybe if you if you can find prophecies of Nostradamus, do a double feature of that and Hetera. Thank you, Kyle, for your report. We look forward to seeing what's next from Kaiju Transmissions podcast, and I personally look forward to seeing you at G Fest. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Um, thanks again for asking us to be on here. Um, check out Kaiju Transmissions. I think that you'll really like the episode we just did. Catch Kyle on the Kaiju Transmissions podcast. Download the episodes and listen to he and Matt Parmley discuss everything related to monster movies. Now let us know what you think. Leave a comment in the section below. Subscribe and like this channel, everything. But now it's time for breaking news. Not much to say in breaking news today, but I would like to point out a few things. Of course, G-Fest is coming up here soon in July. Here's the date. And we look forward to seeing you. I have some panels, of course, that I'm going to be taking part in and hosting a few. I'd like to tell you more about them, but I can't. But as soon as I have something that I can publicize, you'll be the first to hear about it on Facebook, Twitter, and on this channel. Speaking of Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster on this episode, we'd like to wish a happy belated birthday to actor Ken Pachiro Satsuma, who played the Smog Monster. He also played Gigan, and also Godzilla through the Heisei series. And this isn't exactly breaking news, but do you remember the Godzilla anime trailer that came out not too long ago? Yeah! Did you check it out? If you didn't, check it out on this site right now. I thought it looked good, and I'm actually quite excited about it. So in November, we'll be seeing that on Netflix, and maybe after it comes out, we'll have a little reaction and discussion episode about that. So that's all we have for the Monster News Report. I'm Nick Adam Poling, your host. We're glad you've joined us, and the last word belongs to Kyle. Save the Earth. Have a good night, everybody. We have cobalt, it's full of mercury. Too many fumes in our oxygen.